Hi everyone, welcome to NetSpy's Intro to Cloud Infrastructure Penetration Testing webinar. Today we're going to talk about the basics of cloud pen testing and give you a bit of an insight into NetSpy's approach to pen testing the cloud. So first things first, what is the cloud? There's a lot of confusion as to what quantifies something in the cloud. Is it an application that happens to be hosted in the cloud that's run by a third party? Is it your own data that's hosted out in the cloud? Are there virtual machines? There's all sorts of different ways that we can look at the cloud, but for purposes of today, we'll talk about the primary cloud hosting services that are out there, primarily AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. There are a lot of other cloud providers that are out there, but these are the most common ones that you're going to run into. So looking at those, uh, some people will just say, well, that's just hosted in somebody else's data center. And in some ways that's true. Uh, the cloud services that are out there do hosting of almost everything. Uh, there's services that you can host out there, be it file storage or web servers. You can even put your database up in the cloud or individual systems themselves, like virtual machines that we can run out on cloud environments that we can spin up when we need them, take them down when we don't and make use of them over the internet. Additionally, you can host networks. Uh, what we've seen is the use of cloud networks for segmentation. If you want to move your DMZ out to the cloud where it's physically and logically segmented from the rest of your internal network, that's relatively easy to do with a cloud environment. So when you're moving things out to the cloud, there are some common issues that happen to come up. We'll go through a handful of those. So the first one that we run into is data exposure. We can see by all of the headlines here that there are a number of insecure data stores that are out there on the internet. And these are frequently the big cloud items that end up in the headlines. Somebody misconfigures an AWS S3 bucket and all of a sudden credential data or personal information is exposed out to the internet unintentionally. AWS is not the only cloud provider vulnerable to this. Uh, Azure's got its own version of public data storage or unstructured data storage, likewise with Google Cloud, and most other cloud providers allow that as well. And any of these cloud providers, you can end up putting sensitive data out into a data store and accidentally exposing it out to the internet. So like I said, this is one of the more common issues that we see as pen testers, but we also see it more commonly in the actual headlines because it's so impactful. The next common issue that we run into is access key exposure out through the internet. So what does that mean? Well, when we access a cloud service, we typically use some type of key, be it for say storage services or SSH keys to get into virtual machines that are stored out in the cloud. These keys can be accidentally put into you know, GitHub or somebody pastes them into Pastebin or wherever they end up running into the internet, we may be able to find them as attackers and make use of them to gain access to that cloud environment. One of the most common runs we run into uh, be code repositories that are out on GitHub and somebody stores their AWS keys out there. We're able to grab those keys, add those to the AWS CLI, and then all of a sudden we have access into the AWS environment for that GitHub repository. So once we do have access to those keys, we can then start looking for sensitive data, potentially get access to systems and start pivoting from there. Another common issue that we run into is excessive privileges with services and with data within the cloud. So each of these cloud platforms have their individual user and rights management within the platform. And one of the common issues that we run into is a user may be given excessive rights or privileges to systems that they weren't intended to get access to. So one of the common issues that we run into with Microsoft Azure environments is that the users are typically integrated with the standard Active Directory for the domain. So in the case that we have here in our little cloud diagram, we have developers that have contributor rights for virtual machines in the environment. So what does that mean? The developers have full control over, let's say a web server that's used as a virtual machine in that Azure cloud environment. 
with those contributor rights for virtual machines, they may end up having access to other virtual machines that are in that same subscription. What we frequently see with Azure subscriptions is that the IT operations group will include a backup domain controller in the virtual machines up in the Azure cloud. And then all of a sudden developers may have access to a domain controller. Now the rights of contributor for Azure would allow these developers in this case to have full system rights to that domain controller in question. So in an attacker scenario here, uh, once we do get full control over say a contributor right account within Azure, we then may be able to pivot those rights and use something like a VPN tunnel that's back to the corporate network to then access resources back on the internal network. What we're frequently seeing is that the internal network is becoming more and more integrated with the cloud network via VPN connections. And if one of these virtual machines out in the cloud is compromised, you may be able to pivot back to the internal corporate network and gain access that wasn't necessarily intended uh, through the cloud. So from an external perspective, if we're attackers going after the cloud environment, that may be a more interesting target to go after versus the traditional, say, VPN services or Outlook web access. Once we access the cloud environment, we could potentially pivot in through the VPN. So these are just very basic common issues that we run into. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out. We can dive into deeper issues that uh, we frequently run into. But just at a high level, wanted to go over some of those basic issues up front to talk about how we can prevent these issues. So there are a few different approaches that people can take to assessing the security of their cloud environment. You can integrate cloud service testing into your traditional network and application pen testing programs. From the internal network side, we would recommend including any cloud systems or cloud environments that are exposed out to the internal network. From the external side of things, any cloud services that you're utilizing or cloud virtual machines that you may have exposed out to the internet, including those within your external penetration testing scope. And we have PCI mentioned here as well. Uh, we have seen a number of folks moving their cardholder data environments out to cloud so that they can segment off that CDE from the internal network, both logically and physically. Additionally, for application testing, uh, if you are hosting your applications out in the cloud, we highly recommend doing cloud-specific testing against those applications being mobile, web, or thick client applications that happen to utilize cloud services. So outside of traditional pen testing, uh, you can look deeper into cloud penetration testing where that takes more of a focus on the overall cloud infrastructure and not just cloud as an auxiliary to normal pen test services. So NetSpy's approach for this is a bit of a blended approach of network pen testing, more of the traditional internal and external network pen testing and configuration review. So from the external side of things, testing those cloud services that do face out to the internet. On the internal side of things, taking a look at those virtual machines that are hosted out in the cloud and assessing that internal environment for any vulnerabilities that may exist once an attacker gets access to that internal environment, or if you have a malicious internal user that would have access to attack and or scan those systems on the internal environment. Finally, we wrap that up with configuration review for common misconfigurations for your cloud platform. Now these could be issues with privileges for users within the environment, access control issues, or just common misconfiguration of hosted services. Uh, the number of times that we see applications that are not meant to be exposed to the internet or databases with firewall rules that expose them to the entirety of the internet are quite common. And as people are getting to learn how to use these cloud services within their environment, people will make mistakes and uh, we wanna audit those configurations to make sure that we are fixing those mistakes as they happen. And that concludes our intro to cloud penetration testing. If you have any questions about cloud pen testing or are wondering how NetSpy can help you with cloud pen testing, feel free to reach out via netspy.com and we look forward to hearing from you.